Dr. Sage here, continuing our discussion on the main themes of microbiology. In this video, we're going to discuss how humans and microorganisms interact. By the end of this video, what you should have gained is the ability to explain the ways that humans manipulate organisms for our own use, identify multiple professions using microbiology, and summarize the burden of human disease caused by microorganisms, particularly being able to note the difference between developed and developing nations. Humans have been using microorganisms for thousands of years to improve life and even shape civilizations. For example, we've used yeast and other fungi to produce bread and wine and beer and cheese. And in fact, as early as early Egypt, they were using moldy bread as a way to treat wounds long before penicillin was discovered. More modern ways we use microorganisms include biotechnology, which is the manipulation of microorganisms to make products in an industrial setting. For example, there are humans who need to take insulin injections. Well, insulin is a human protein. We don't extract the insulin from a human to give to a different human. Instead, what we do is, through techniques which you'll learn a little bit about in this course, we cause an organism such as a yeast to build human insulin protein. And then we use those yeasts as little factories to make insulin for humans to give to humans for insulin injections. Now that would involve the use of genetic engineering, which is where we manipulate the genetics of microbes, plants, and animals for the purpose of creating new products and genetically modified organisms or GMOs. That also involves recombinant DNA technology, which are the techniques that allow the transfer of genetic material from one organism to another and to deliberately alter DNA. For example, to take the gene from humans that codes for the insulin protein and put that gene into yeast so yeast can start building human insulin protein for us. We also use microorganisms for bioremediation, which is introduction of microbes into the environment to restore stability or to clean up toxic pollutants. For example, when there's an oil spill, sometimes we can use microorganisms to help us clean up that oil spill. So what are the branches of microbiology? What are the professions that some people can go into in the field of microbiology? Well, microbiologists study cell structure and function, growth and physiology, genetics, taxonomy and evolutionary history, and interactions with the living and non-living environment. We have medical microbiology, which deals with microbes that cause diseases in humans and animals public health microbiology and epidemiology that monitor the control and spread of diseases in communities. These are things such as the CDC, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, or WHO, the World Health Organization. Farther back in time, we had individuals who you might not think today as a modern scientist looking like this, but this was David Bruce, who was a microbiologist, who back in 1887 discovered the microorganism that caused Malta fever. We have immunology, which is a complex web of protective substances and cells produced in response to infection. This includes vaccination, blood testing, and allergies, the role of the immune system in cancer and autoimmune diseases. Then we have industrial microbiology, which safeguards our food and our water. We use biotechnology, and microbes are used to create amino acids, beer, drugs, enzymes, and vitamins. Agricultural microbiology is the relationship between microbes and domesticated plants and animals. And environmental microbiology is the effect of microbes on the Earth's diverse habitats. Now, if we're talking about the interaction between microbes and humans, we also need to discuss infectious diseases. So a pathogen is any agent, such as a virus, a bacteria, a fungus, a protozoan, or a helminth, that causes disease. There are nearly 2,000 different microbes that can cause disease. Now, here's a chart showing the main causes of death, both in the United States and worldwide. Now, if we look within the United States, we see that there are causes of death due to microorganisms, such as influenza and pneumonia. But in the United States, in a developed nation, our major causes of death are not typically microorganisms. However, if you look worldwide, which includes developing nations, microorganisms causing influenza and pneumonia cause a much higher percentage of the deaths and you also have other microorganism causes of death within the top 10 causes of death worldwide. The diseases most clearly caused by microorganisms would be influenza or the flu, pneumonia, diarrheal diseases, and tuberculosis. So some examples of infectious diseases, malaria kills about 
450,000 people every year. It's transmitted by mosquitoes, but the cause of the disease is a microorganism. We also have new, what are called emergent diseases, as well as older or re-emergent diseases, which are increasing. Things like Ebola, AIDS, hepatitis C, and viral encephalitis. While polio, leprosy, and parasitic worm diseases has largely been eradicated. Certain diseases that were once considered non-infectious are now found to be caused by microbes, such as gastric ulcers caused by Helobacter pylori, which you can see in this image at the bottom of the figure. Uh, we found a link between certain cancers and bacteria or viruses. The Kasaki virus has been associated with diabetes and schizophrenia. Multiple sclerosis, OCD, coronary artery disease, and obesity can be partially linked to chronic microbial infections. Today we're discovering the subtler side of microorganisms and the quiet, slow, destructive diseases they cause. For example, female infertility caused by chlamydia infections, liver cancer which can be caused by the hepatitis virus, and cervical cancer that can be caused by HPV, human papilloma virus. Also, an increasing number of patients with weakened immune systems are subject to infections by common microbes, which are not pathogenic to healthy people. Drug-resistant microbes can also contribute to an increase in infectious disease. For example, you might have heard of MRSA before, which stands for Methicillin-Resistant Staphylococcus aureus. It's a bacteria that's resistant to many antibiotics right now, so it's very difficult to fight off a MRSA infection. So, this is just a very brief introduction between the interactions between humans and microorganisms. We're gonna go into a lot of details about those interactions throughout the rest of this semester. But until then, this has been Dr. Sage.